Assume you're out on a stroll with your dog when you notice a dog approaching you, accompanied by its owner. Everything appears to be okay until the other dog notices your dog. The other dogs become extremely vigilant. Then it starts barking and lunging at the end of the leash. It's out of control. The owner is doing their best to keep the dog under control while also attempting to move the dog forward. You finally get past the other dog and owner, giving your dog a little scratch and praise for being such a good dog. You can't help but wonder was that dog aggressive or what? This is an all too common scenario. It becomes particularly worrisome when it is your dog that is going berserk. Is he being aggressive or is it something else? Reactivity versus aggression. It is true that aggression is real and there are some dogs that can be very aggressive. But, there is another term that you should know and that term is reactive. A reactive dog can, at times, look very aggressive, barking and lunging. But there is a very key difference in aggression and reactivity. An aggressive dog is typically confident, spoiling for a fight, and ready to prove his dominance over anything. A reactive dog is riddled with fear. He is putting on a tough show to try and scare away the very thing that is scaring him. As I said, reactivity looks a lot like aggression but it definitely is not. Most reactive dogs will do a big show of barking and lunging. But if what they fear gets closer to them the dog will back away and try to escape, realizing that he did not scare the thing he feared. Reactivity You can think of reactivity as a doggy panic attack. The dog gets so scared and so worked up that he can no longer function normally. He barks and lunges at whatever is scaring him. You will see many owners trying to have the dog sit or look at them or do some other command. However, this will not work. Asking the dog to sit while he is being reactive would be like being asked to do a math equation while you are being mugged. To your mind, doing the math equation just doesn't make sense. And so it is with a reactive dog in the middle of reacting. Sit, why would I sit when something terrible is coming for me? Does this mean that there is no hope for the reactive dog? Should you just keep the dog inside and never walk him or take him out? Of course, not. There is hope for every reactive dog. Training a reactive dog to be unreactive can be a long and challenging process, but it is well worth the effort. When you have a dog that barks and goes crazy about something, you train it like crazy, and then one day the trigger stops bothering it. Well, that is a day for celebration, and one that you will not forget. Identifying triggers. All reactive dogs have a trigger. That thing that sets them off, that thing that terrifies them and sends them into a panic attack. The trigger is something that the dog associated with an issue he had in the past. It could be that his trigger is large spotted dogs, because he was attacked by one when he was young. It could be something as odd as women in dresses, because he was looking at a woman in a dress when he stepped on a piece of glass and hurt his paw. Dogs often associate what they see with what they feel. So, if they see a black dog while they are getting zapped with a shock collar they will associate black dogs with pain around their neck. This can make identifying triggers rather difficult. It is important to note that the trigger is different for every dog. For some their trigger might be another dog, for some a tall male human, for others small white dogs, still others will react to bicycles, dump trucks, children, women in dresses, or long-haired herding breeds. The trigger, or triggers, will be different for each reactive dog. It is also common for there to be more than one trigger. The important thing is to identify the triggers. Keep a logbook and write down any encounters in which your dog reacts. Keep track of the people, vehicles, and or animals that trigger the reaction. Take note of as much as possible. Counter conditioning. Once you know the trigger that is when you will start to counter condition the dog to the trigger. Obviously, the dog has a negative association with the trigger, so we want the dog to instead have a positive one. How can we do this? Well, first you will need to find your dog threshold for the trigger. The threshold is all about distance. If your dog sees his trigger how close can he be before he reacts? You want to find the place just outside of where he reacts, that is his threshold and you don't want to cross it, yet. As you progress with the training you will be able to slowly move the threshold closer and closer to the object of your dog's fear. But for now you need to start where your dog's threshold is. Next, you will need to set up a situation. Have the dog's trigger at some distance, far enough that your dog will not react. Then play to look at that game. Be sure to have some extra tasty treats ready for this game and a clicker is helpful too. Point out the trigger to your dog and say look at that when your dog looks, click, your dog will look back at you to see what the noise was. If he does not look back at you and instead starts to react, you are too close to the trigger, you need to away. Repeat this game many times at this distance. Next, you will move a touch closer, do this carefully. You could toss the treat to your dog so that it lands just a few inches closer to the trigger. 
then play the game some more from there. This is how you will work. A little closer and a little closer and a little closer. Every treat you give your dog in the presence of his enemy will help him to have a more positive association with it. There are a few other options that you can use other than the look at that game. These can be interspersed with the look at that game to make things more interesting and fun. One thing that you can do is walk with your dog. Walk parallel to the trigger, staying outside of your dog's threshold. As you walk, give your dog treats for looking at you versus looking at the trigger. When to train and when to avoid. Let's say that your dog is reactive to other dogs when he is on leash. Then let's suppose that you are out on a walk with your dog. There is another dog walking toward you. What are your options? Well, you could use the opportunity to do a bit of training. This can work great, sometimes. But what if the other dog is coming fast or you forgot to bring treats or you just don't feel like this is the right moment to train? This is when you will need to avoid the trigger as best as you can. Perhaps you take your dog up into someone's driveway or garden to get further from the trigger, or you might go off path on a hike to avoid the trigger. You may even want to run by the trigger if you have no other options. You want to get as far away from the trigger as fast as possible. Exercise. Exercise is always a great defense against reactivity because a tired dog is a good dog that is less likely to react. So, be sure to exercise your dog even if it is reactive. This may mean that you need to walk your dog early in the morning or after dark so that he will not run into any triggers. If you need to walk in the dark, be safe, carry a flashlight, and wear plenty of reflective wear on you and your dog. You can also exercise your dog by playing in the yard or doing other obedience training with your dog. Mental exercise can be as important for tiring your dog as physical exercise. So, puzzle games, eating his food out of a stuffable toy, and obedience or trick training can also go a long way to wear your dog out. It can be a good idea to do some exercise with your dog before you work on reactivity training if possible. You don't want the dog to be completely exhausted, just a bit worn out. This will help to take the edge off while you work on the reactivity training with him. Preventing reactivity. A lot of information about reactivity will tell you that you just need to work on fixing the problem and not worry about why it happened. But if you are like me, then you want to know how to prevent reactivity in the future. Thankfully, the answer to preventing reactivity is relatively simple. Socialization, socialization, socialization. Socialization means that your dog gets tons of positive experiences with a wide range of animals, people, situations, and the like. It is especially important that puppies get socialized, but honestly socialization is lifelong training. Treats are definitely your friend whenever your dog is experiencing something new. So, be sure to keep a few handy. If you enjoyed this video, kindly press the like button. Also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Thank you for watching.